Lake foiling is an amazing sport. It's as close to human-powered flight as I will ever get. I was hooked from the first moment I saw someone on my lake flying around atop a foil. I'm seeking the best foils to allow us to wake thief, and to wake thief you need to ride the wakes of passing boats to create an endless wave that you can surf on a foil. Today we're going to answer the most common questions, but far and away the most popular comment is I want. There's nothing like flying on a hydrofoil and the first time you see it you know you want to do it. After that, there's where to buy. This makes sense, and my last count there are more than 29 manufacturers to choose from, and it's an intimidating set of choices that need to be made. One of the most popular questions is, how much does a foil cost? And finally, the most popular, how do I buy the right foil? I began foiling three years ago. I purchased my first foil on Amazon. At the time, there were fewer manufacturers and I felt like I didn't have anywhere to turn. I thought I'd nailed it with this one. Well, it turns out I didn't. This wing was way too small, three times too small in fact. As a consequence, we couldn't pump free of the boat and we had to go quite fast to even fly. And when we say foil, it really is comprised of many parts. The first is the base plate that connects the board, the mast which extends from the base plate to the fuselage, the fuselage which connects the front wing to the rear wing. Decisions are needed for each of these components. Manufacturers have many front wings, rear wings, masts, and fuselages. This one's light blue, this one's dark blue. I think they're the same color. And there are so many choices to make. Some manufacturers have more than 30 front wings, more than 10 rear wings, more than 10 masts, and more than 10 fuselages. That's more than 30,000 combinations you can create. And no manufacturer is immune to this, as there are so many foil use cases, and one foil is not the best at everything. I love having so many combinations. It means you can create anything, but it does make it hard to make a recommendation. I found this amazing Google Doc sheet that I'll include a link to in the video description. What we're looking at here is just some of the front wing and rear wing options on the market today. So what foil should you buy? When we're asked this, we need to ask three questions back. How do you want to use it? How much do you weigh? And how experienced are you? For number one, I'll use myself as a case study. If I'm asked how do I use it, here's how I answer. I want the best foil for the lake. There are four main uses on the lake. Dock starting, wind winging, surfing big wakes, and surfing small distant wakes. I like to dock start, but I'm not as good as I'd like to be. I surf small wakes behind my jet ski. To be specific, I want to surf the second wake behind my jet ski. Once in a while, I'll get out on a surf boat, but I really prefer surfing many wakes back, where it's quieter and the noise of the boat is distant. This is my zen moment. I also tend to get pretty bored surfing in one spot for too long, so I want to transfer to distant wakes behind the boat I'm surfing behind. I also like to wake thief, which is pumping around the lake surfing passing wakes, and creating my own endless wave comprised of the wakes on the lake. So for me, I like to dock start, surf small wakes, and wake thief. I need a pumping foil. This is a foil that generates a lot of lift at low speed, can glide well, and let me pump long distances without tiring too quickly. These tend to be higher aspect ratio wings because they have less drag and require less energy to pump. What they give up in turns or carving tightness due to their huge wingspan, they more than make up for in versatility for the lake. While we know what we want, high aspect ratio, we can't yet know how big of a wing you need until you know your weight. And that brings us to weight. I weigh 190 pounds or 86 kilos. This foil has to generate enough lift to overcome my weight. I know I can fly my 1700 square centimeter Axis 1150 at three meters per second. Someone lighter than me could fly this wing even slower. But at high speeds, this wing would generate so much lift they'd need to pitch the nose down. So bigger riders need bigger wings to get the same performance as smaller riders. And a smaller rider doesn't need as big of a front wing. If you're a larger rider and want to ride small wakes, you'll need a big front wing. 
If you want to surf wakes of a large surf boat, you don't need as large of a wing. In my experience, larger riders need higher aspect ratio wings with greater than 1400 square centimeters of area, ideally even larger. I like the Axis 1150. It has an area of 1700 square centimeters and an aspect ratio of greater than 7. If someone said they were lighter than me and wanted my experience on the 1150, we can figure that out. As it turns out, a rider who weighs 150 pounds or 68 kilos only needs 1300 square centimeters of area to do it. And that wing exists. As it turns out, it's the Axis 910. I'm an intermediate foiler seeking to become advanced. While I'm certain I couldn't surf a big ocean wave, I'm comfortable pumping long distances and finding the right spot on a small wake to surf. I still can't dock start 100% of the time. We need to know your level to understand the learning curve you're going to start at. Large area wings plane more slowly and are easier to take off but have more drag when you're flying. High aspect ratio wings tend to plane less, they lift suddenly, and have a higher sensitivity to changes in angle of attack. So in conclusion, which foil should you buy? For me, it's pretty straightforward. I'm seeking to pump long distances to wake thief, dock start, and surf small wakes. I'm not light, I weigh 190 pounds or 86 kilos, so I need a lot of area. If you're lighter, you just don't need as big of a wing. And if you're not interested in pumping, dock starting, or surfing small wakes, get a smaller wing and benefit from the lower drag and the easier carving. In my mind, it's important to get the front wing right. It's the 800 pound gorilla. It generates most of the lift, drag, and rider experience. The rest is about preference, and as a beginner, it's hard to know what you'll like. I believe a middle of the road length fuselage, not the longest or the shortest, and a low drag rear wing, again middle of the road, will work well. I also believe you don't need a long mast. I like 75 centimeters. You need a mast long enough to give yourself room for error, but not so long that it feels like you're walking on stilts and out of control. If you get your first foil right, you're going to be able to tweak it in the years ahead as you establish preferences. Just get the front wing right and work from there. I'd also recommend a reputable manufacturer. I didn't even cover the board today because I believe it's the simplest of all. Nearly all boards fit the 9cm track to attach a foil to and I found that I like the smallest, lightest and lowest volume board possible. And there's a lot of them on the market. Just get something big enough for you to get pulled out of the water. And finally, how much does it cost? Well you're looking to spend between $1500 and $3000, depending on what you want. It's an investment, but if you use it half as much as I do, it will be the best money you ever spend.